Yo! What up guys and welcome back to another one. Holy cow, did we get some cold weather here in the Midwest or what? Are you guys liking this weather? Because I sure am. It has drove down the birds. Oh my lord, the hunting season is upon us. And I thought, you know what? I've been holding out long enough. The viewers, all you guys have been asking for me to do new how to blow a goose call and how to blow a duck call. So that's what we're gonna do. But first we're gonna do the goose call video first. That's what we're doing today. I got the old fire roaring in the shop. Oh man, I'm telling you what, it is chile outside. I mean chile. But like I was saying, it is freezing outside. The season is here. And what better to do than to light the old fire. Oh yeah. Sit in the old flower chair and do some calling videos. That's what we're gonna be doing. We got two coming your way. Today is the goose calling video, and then you need to stay tuned because the duck calling video will be up. But today we will be using the new Ducks Next Gen Goose Call. If you guys haven't tried this out, picked it up, blown it, or anything else, you probably need to do so if you're looking for a good, brand new, affordable goose call. We're selling these bad boys for $49.99. Heck of a deal. But all the videos that you've been watching lately, any of the goose hunts where I've been clucking on this bad boy, the Minnesota videos, the Nebraska videos, the Canada videos, it was all with this call right here. And I have to say that I absolutely love this thing. Very low air. It does not require a lot of air to break this sucker open. And what's better than all is that it's easy to tune. Oh my goodness, that fire feels amazing. Oh! Oh man, I've been waiting for this time of year. Y'all know it. When it was summertime and I was pigeon hunting, you guys know I love my pigeon hunting, but now that the season is upon us, man, I'm just, dude, I'm just full of energy. It's ridiculous. So, what I'm going to do in this video is we're, we're not going to go over each technique of calling. We're going to do a couple of the simple clucks, the simple moan clucks, cluck moans, just like, the, that's the only really particular stuff that I do. I don't get into no spit notes and clucking this and clucking all these variety of names because I'm telling you what, I do not claim to be the best goose or duck caller on this earth. I never have claimed to be. I just know how to uh, call the birds well enough so I can shoot them a couple times. This is for all my beginners. Anybody out there that, you know, you're really confident and you're really good, this video may not be for you, but this is for all my beginners that are looking for new techniques and ways to draw them geese into your spread close enough so you can take a pop at them. So we're going to do a couple of the first notes, but then we're going to get into how to call the geese. Like if you're calling honkers, compared to lessers and cacklers. There's a big difference and we'll get into that once we get through a couple of these first calls. So the first call is going to be the old So what I'm doing is I'm basically cutting the air off with the tongue hitting the roof of my mouth. So look uh, just a little bit of moan. I'll do it through the back of the call here. That's, I know, it sounds goofy me not doing it normally. So you can take that, just the regular. I know, I've been sitting here looking like an idiot doing this, but. You are literally cutting the air off by taking your tongue and stop and hitting the roof of your mouth. Look, that's when you break over that reed. That's the cluck. <laughs> Same thing. You're just making it quicker. You're not dragging that moan out and waiting for that reed to break over. Now, what's great about this call is breaking that reed over is extremely simple. It does not take much air. That's what's great. You can really hammer down on this thing. <laughs> So you, it, it, it looks like a little longer call. It's about a mid-sized call, but I'm telling you, for the size of it, it is by far the lowest amount of air required to break over that reed that I've ever used. I honestly love this call. I really do. So, honker calling. You're going to do some light, slow calling. To get their attention, you want to get their attention once you get their attention on them honkers you just slow down you know what I mean just start clucking slower as they come to you now 
if you start cutting off the calls at 50 and 40 and 30 yards and they start flaring, well that means you might need to keep making noise as they come. So on the next set, always learn something if a group flares. Try to learn if it was a calling, obviously if it's a spread or decoys, but the calling always makes a huge difference. My advice is to call them birds the first couple times close. If they really like the call, don't let off too much. Maybe just slow it down, get a little easier as they get closer, and let them finish. A lot of times you're just going to get their attention and you're going to cut the calling off once they hit that 20 and 30 yard mark. That's what I've really seen honkers react to the best if I can give any explanation on honker hunting. <coughs> that is the most common noise you can make with this thing. Hook, hook, hook. So you're just going to hum a little bit, a little bit of air, then cut it off with the roof of your mouth and it'll break that reed over. Use a little more air and a little less air to find your kind of medium spot, but once you get the hang of it, guys, it's all muscle memory. The more you practice on this thing, I can guarantee you, the faster you're going to get better. So, calling is not just an over the night thing. Watch a video and learn it. You have to put the time in and build the muscle memory in your jaw and in your tongue so you don't think about it anymore when it just becomes a knee jerk reaction. I'm going to try to get close. Not, I don't mean to get weird here, but can you hear me? So like, again, again, I know I'm kind of losing my words here. So typically I do use a slight moan in my throat. Let's turn the call around again. That is the short that's where you can put the cluck moan into effect now on working birds when they're banking and curling on you say they're sweeping around you're like oh this might be the pass guys on those turns you need to hit them hard so when they're turning on any type of turn where they're turning to the decoys they got their back to you and you know they're going to face up to you that's where you hit them hard a lot of times <laughs> hear that <laughs> that right there doesn't sound the best but i can tell you what i've turned more birds around by just screaming at them <laughs> just like that i have turned flocks around time and time again just by hammering on them <laughs> it's just so much noise there <laughs> So much noise that they're like, oh, what was that? And they turn back around and see what's up. But that's a lot. I, I use that on honkers and lancers a, lo a lot, just a bunch. But with lesser calling, you want to be making a lot of noise. Cacklers and lessers, they're more squawky. They make a bunch more noise than the honkers. It's just... <laughs> a lot of times, if I'm filming or if I only have one hand available, I will just sit there and... <laughs> Just like that and maybe throw in a if they turn and they want to come back anytime they turn away from the decoys somewhat flare or just you know turning to sit up again to make another approach I'll always give them if I think they're leaving it'll be a just like that I will give them that hey come back come back where are you going so it's a lot of noise yet again a lot of times though when you think they're leaving hit them hard try to get them to turn back around all right so i better slow down here i better just slow it down and take my time if you guys like this video so far let me know by giving me a big old thumbs up but i'm trying to take uh the calling technique that i use and put it towards the hunt not so much you know competition techniques i'm not a competition caller guys i just know how to kill some birds and that's about it but just taking real world situations and bring them to you. That's what I'm trying to describe here. So uh, if you know they're small geese, you're going to be clucking a lot. You're going to want to hammer them. A lot of times, it's, that's going to be my go-to call on the small geese is... <laughs> that's about how I call the small geese around here. When they turn away, again, I'm going to hammer them with the... <laughs> not doing the best at calling today like I said I'm not the best in the world but I want to give you my techniques here uh, now guys back to my original claim I can blow through the back of this thing all I want and you're gonna that's what you're gonna hear 
But until you get a call in your hand and you start jamming on it a lot and a lot and a lot, I mean, you got to put hours in on a call to, to sound decent. You really do. This last summer, I knew that <laughs> I had to make better goose calling videos, so I practiced a lot this summer. I got a long ways this summer, but still, I'm not near as good as a lot of people out there. I'll tell you right now. But just learning these simple clucks, cluck moans, moan clucks, will get you so far, I'm telling you. One of the main questions is, Bobby, please do a video on how to call lessers, how to call honkers. So that's why I kind of want to incorporate it here and talk about it quite a bit is lessers and cacklers, you're going to make a lot of noise, hands down. Honkers, get their attention. Some of the first groups that come, get their attention. And then at 60, 50 yards, start really backing off that call. Give them some moans. You know the old honkers, they like the... <laughs> They love the moans, so when them honkers are getting close, you're going to want to moan at them a little bit. The, the lessers, you can pretty much jam on them all the way to the ground. A lot of times, they will like a lot of noise all the way until they put their feet down. So, I think the next part that I want to do is we're going to imitate a group of birds. We see them way out, maybe a mile, half a mile out. They're coming, or they're banking. We need to get their attention and draw them to the spread. What I'm going to do, this is exactly my routine to get their attention. Just like that. I mean, hammer down on them, boy. And when I get their attention, when they turn and they see me, that's where I'm going to evaluate. I'm going to go, okay, let's wait a minute. Yep, they're coming. Let's hammer on them a little more. <laughs> like that and as they're coming they're getting to maybe 60 70 yards and the first sits that's where you're really going to learn what the birds are really wanting to do if they're wanting a lot of noise while they're coming to the spread sometimes when they get to 40 yards they'll kind of back off times there's like two or three of us calling so those little moans I'll throw in there if another person's calling but usually if I'm the only one calling it's gonna be a lot of clucking and a lot of <laughs> just like that trying to fill the void if there's not another caller now if there's another caller you're gonna basically take turns one's gonna moan one's gonna cluck one's gonna cluck one's gonna moan and you're just gonna keep going back and forth but as in birds are coming out about 40 yards I tend to back off. Now a lot of times when we back off and if they react to that, say they, whoa, 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 we don't like that, there ain't enough noise here for how many decoys you have. That's another thing. You always got to make sure that you're matching the hatch when it comes to your size of spread and your calling. A lot of times on 10 dozen, 15 dozen, 5 dozen decoy spreads, you can overcall really, really, really easy. But you know, here in Kansas, you guys have watched enough videos, I sit large spreads usually, usually well over 20, 30, 50 dozen. And with that size of a spread, you can really jam on them because the birds are expecting a lot of noise because there's so many decoys out. So one thing, like if you're honker hunting, that it's a big deal. If you only have five to seven decoys out, think about how much noise those birds, that seven dozen birds, would be making. It's not going to be a bunch. So when we're talking about lessers and cacklers, I mean, usually every feed we find around here is a thousand birds. So when we try to match a hatch, we usually sit a thousand decoys around there, if not more or a little less. So that means there's going to be a lot of noise involved, especially if you're laying in them decoys, you're going to want to make a bunch of noise. If you're in a tree row, you're going to want to back that noise off as they approach, because if you're in the tree row, you're not in the decoys. A lot of times I have found that if I'm Basically, if I'm in the tree row here, and then it goes the decoy spread, and they're coming in like this to the wind, I'm not calling in those decoys. So the noise actually comes farther away than you would expect, and the geese know that. They can hear it. They're like, oh, I'm over the decoys, but the noise is still coming from over there. Believe me, I've been caught plenty of times in that situation because we were just over calling out of tree rows. If you're laying in the decoys, and you have a bunch of them out, it's hard to over call. But if you're in a tree row and you have limited decoys out, or if you just have limited decoys in general out, you can overcall quite easy. So just keep that in mind. Overcalling sometimes is worse than not calling at all. Sometimes not calling at all, I've found there's a lot of hunts out there 
that we have just jammed on them, got their attention. <laughs> you know what I mean? Got their attention and then we just shut up. And a lot of times that's how it goes. But just got to work with the birds. If you see them flare on the first couple times, think about what might have went wrong and change it on the next one. Like I always say, like I always say, as waterfowl hunters, duck hunters, and goose hunters, you should always be trying to fix something. If it's working, obviously don't change anything. But if it's not working, they're either flaring, uh, they're wanting to run to the side of your spread and not come down the middle. Uh, if they're flaring due to noise, due to the calling, maybe someone's not that great of a caller and you think that that might be flaring them, that's where things can get touchy, guys. you got to be nice to people. If they're not the greatest caller, it doesn't matter. They're trying to learn. Maybe you can be nice and say, hey, man, uh, we're just going to back off on the calling for a little bit. That's what I say a lot of times. So it's not about being rude or thinking you're better than somebody. It's just going, hey, buddy, I think we need to back off the calling a little bit because they flared, and that's what I think is the reason why they flared. It can be an uncomfortable situation. I know all about it. I was there. I was trying to learn. I was the sucky guy for a long time. I still pretty much suck. Whew. Well, I feel like I uh, beat the horse enough here on this uh, goose call. I think that um, there's still more to touch on, a lot more when it comes to goose calling. It, goose calling is one of those things, it's a lot more dynamic than ducks. Um, I love duck hunting, it, it's my favorite. But when we're talking about geese and trying to coax the geese, especially honkers, the honkers, the old guys, whoo, they can be difficult too. So it ain't just any birds easier than the other, it's all about your technique you use. So I can say, the more you jam on this thing, the more you blow that call, the quicker you're going to get better, if that makes any sense. Another thing, it's really cool to watch all these competition callers uh, and all the noises they make and all these clucks and all these crazy notes that they hit, but it doesn't take that, guys. I'm telling you right now, you don't have to be that good. So I really, really, really stress the fact that you need to just get your cluck moans and your moan clucks down, your normal just clucks, some light moans. That's all you need. It's about four different, three different things, and that's it. Once you get those down, you can start mixing them up a bunch, and your variety of calling can really get diverse with only knowing three or four notes. Don't think you need to go on YouTube and watch all these competition, how to cluck, how to do this, triple cluck, yada, yada, yada. You really don't need it right now. Get the basics down, and then move forward as time progresses. And I just want to throw this in there. When it's cold like this, you got to understand you don't have to be the best caller in the world. Cold weather says hungry birds. Them birds, when they get to that field, they're going to give it up a lot easier because there's hunger involved. It's cold enough. They know that they have to eat to survive. This becomes a survival instinct. They will decoy a lot better in really cold, cold conditions, windy conditions like today, maybe rather than a sunny, nice day. That's, that's why. Their instincts say, there's birds. I'm not going to judge that spread too hard. I know I need to eat. Let's get in there. So, it's not always about calling. Calling isn't a make or break thing. When it's cold like this, maybe you won't call at all because they'll just see the decoys and give it straight up. So, keep all these factors in mind every hunt that you go out. There's always something to learn. Always take something from your hunt, learn something, put it in the bank, and come back the next time when the conditions are like that day. It's all about conditions. It's all about new birds, stale birds, juvies, adults. You get it. But I plan on doing how to blow a duck call video as well. Stay tuned for that one. And if you want to pick the duck's goose call up or any of these sweet lanyards that we got back in stock, I will link all of them down below in the description. I really, really, really hope that this video was helpful. If it sucked, let me know down below and be like, dude, that was a horrible job. But if you liked it, Drop a comment down below and let me know because the duck one will be coming out. Hope you guys are all out there killing birds and enjoying this weather, enjoying the season that's finally upon us. We've been waiting all summer, so it's finally here, guys. I hope you guys are out there enjoying the outdoors and grinding, freezing your butt off just like me. But thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one, guys. Subscribe if you haven't. Peace.